Hey, I'm Josh Rosen, host of Dirt. I'm here in Austin, Texas at the Huckberry headquarters to take you through what I brought on my trip to Alaska for the most recent Dirt episode. All right, here's my shred bag. This thing has been with me for years. I love it because it's one of the only bags that has roller skate wheels on the back. I don't know why that's not a more common thing, but if you've ever rolled one of these bags, they are a huge pain in the ass and they break in different parts and make it almost impossible to use after a while. This one is held up, so I keep using it. Nike Snowboard Inc. doesn't exist anymore, but we wish they would come back because it's nice when companies like Nike make things like this because they're really, really well made. Traveling with snowboard bags is annoying, but the things that you can put inside these bags is always great. So preparing to pack for any of these dirt episodes is always really exciting because the idea is to get after as much as we possibly can in a short period of time. That means we're gonna be around water, we're gonna be in the mountains, we are gonna be hiking, fishing and anything because at dirt we want to experience as much as we can about a place in a short amount of time i'm bringing all sorts of stuff because we're going to encounter any number of conditions and elements water dirt everything it's a visual experience i think for the viewer that is is pretty unique because our filmers are just really incredible at capturing scenery and texture and alaska is that's it alaska is scenery and texture i always do bring my gore wear to keep me dry and warm. Underneath at my base layer is always gonna be this gore thermo hybrid half zip, which will sit against my skin and keep me warm no matter what happens. It is incredibly warm, but it's also super breathable. And when you're hiking, fishing, literally doing anything, you're gonna be sweating from the inside and you want your body to be able to let out heat and at the same time, keep heat in. So this does a great job of that. It has this quarter zip, which makes it easy to go over your helmet when you use it for mountain biking, which is huge. If you've ever had that experience, trying to put on a shirt over a helmet, it just doesn't work. Another thing that we like about this piece is the abrasion resistance on the arms and shoulders and on the back you're gonna get some tough pieces. So where your belt rubs, where you're gonna rub as you move around, it's gonna take all of that abrasion and keep working, which is hugely important. We love that. So all around, this is a perfect first layer. Next are my boots. It's funny when I got these boots, I thought these are giant. They sort of look like a Kanye West item. I think it was the neoprene that I really liked, the idea that they would be soft and not rigid like rubber boots, but I take these now everywhere and when in doubt, I wear them. When I'm going hiking and it's wet, mushrooming, anything, rubber boots, I don't know. I just sort of like, they've, they've made them nicer now. They're like actually have footbeds and they're not just these rubber floppy things. They're like actual support. Skate goes with me everywhere. I think anyone who is a skateboarder at any point in their life will pack along a skateboard. Alaska, not a great skate destination, but we did skate. We found a skate park, rickety old skate park, skated with some local kids. Skateboarding is this like universal community. So bring a skateboard with you wherever you go and you will meet awesome people. My Red Wings had the amazing experience of going to Red Wing and making these very boots. I did none of the making, but I watched them being made. And there are that item that when you go to look at your shoes and you look and you think about what you are gonna wear that day, you just go to that same pair of boots every time because they become second skin. They are bomb proof, a little bit heavy, which is good when you are, you know, trudging up stuff, kicking rocks, but I will forever be a Red Wing guy now because they are just that comfortable. And a piece that always goes in the board bag, anywhere I go, whether it's a surfboard bag or a snowboard bag is a fishing rod. So this is my salmon rod that I use in Washington all the time. It is the Guide Select Pro nine foot by Akuma, and that is paired with this Shimano 4000 XG, which is a Vanford. Big rod, hoping for big fish. I didn't catch any. I snagged one for a second and almost took out my cameraman with the giant barbed hook. You usually don't bring a snowboard to Alaska in July, but speaking with Jeff Hope, who is our guide for the trip, and he's also a guide at Third Edge Heli, he said, bring a snowboard, we'll see what we can do. Last day, we were going to our final feast, and Jeff said, do you wanna go snowboarding? And I said, yes. And so he dropped me off on the top of a peak, which was amazing. It had probably seen sun for, three, four months without snow. So conditions were rough, but it was an incredible experience with Jeff and really capped off an incredible trip. 
and I brought this, which is in every way my daily snowboard. So this is a GNU Banked Country. It is a co-pro model from Temple and Cannon Cummins, who are a father-son duo, Northwest Legends, and it's just perfect. It's perfect for me in every way. Still has the dirt from the glacier that we snowboarded down in Alaska. I always keep my daughter with me here on my high back, Bo Rosen. I mean, I will ride this all year round in Washington and was real psyched to get a chance to take it out in Alaska. That's most of the big stuff that goes in the snowboard bag. Now I'll take it through my backpack. So for me, this is my everyday backpack. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I take this Yeti pack with me. It is tough as nails. You can see it is filthy from all sorts of different stuff, but there is not a stitch out of place. It has become my everyday backpack. I have been running this Goreware and it's incredible. So I'm new to mountain biking. It's only been a couple of years. And so for me, it's really important to be dry, windproof, and also I sweat a lot big guy, so I need something that is going to allow me to sweat, but also keep me warm. And the pant is called the Fern Flow Pant. This Fern Flow Pant is epic. It looks great and it works so well. Pieces I like about it are these zips on the side, which allow you to get in and out and keep your knee pads on. Some ventilation on the side. The ventilation will save you because in the morning when you're pedaling up, you are gonna be hot as you get. And then on the way down, you wanna be warm because now you sweat and now all of that is causing some chill. So you zip that up and you're good to go. So the ventilation on these things is key. Gore-Tex Infinium reinforced in all the spots that you need them for toughness. And then you've got a pocket that holds a cell phone against your thigh in like the perfect spot. So as you know, gotta have your cell phone because you gotta get the shot of your buddy doing some sweet tabletops off the jumps. I also ran the Endure jacket by Goreware. This ticks off all the boxes. It has extra big hood that goes over your helmet. So when it's pouring rain, you're gonna get rain down the back of your neck. Really nice to have a hood that fits your helmet, has stretch around the outside. It also has Gore-Tex waterproof, and that is hugely important for obvious reasons. And reflective, which is great when you're riding in the street from trails to other trails, which happens all the time. And then it has this packable system in the pocket. If you are mountain biking, you have very little storage, as you know, so you wanna be able to pack it in and put it in a, even a fanny pack. So just an all around perfect mountain bike jacket. Currently I'm reading Britney Spears, the woman I'm in, or in me, the woman in me. I'm a huge Britney Spears fan, thanks to my dear, dear friend, Timmy, who introduced it to me in New York at the discotheques in the early 2000s, and have followed along with her journey, which is endlessly entertaining, sometimes good and sometimes bad, but the book is actually really good. She writes it in her voice, and her voice is what you'd expect. It's just Britney, bitch. I, I, Britney book. Then I bring a pad to doodle. My mom is an artist and has always had pads and pens around. She does a, a doodle a day, or she calls it a sketch a day, every day she has for the last 30 years. I don't do it every single day, but I try to do it as much as I possibly can. But it's nice, it's another one of those pieces just like reading that just like slows you down, stops you for a second, puts you in a place, and allows you a minute to reflect. Also my mother instilled in me looking for really cool pens and pencils. You can put her in a pen store and leave her for two to five hours and then you'll have to extract her and she will come out with any number of incredible pens and pencils. So these are some Swiss numbers I got in a really cool store in New York City. And then I bring knives. I keep a knife on me always. Buy a switchblade because you can and they're fun, and you probably wanted one when you were a kid, so you should have one as an adult. Also, gotta bring a foraging knife. Oppenel makes cool old French knives. When you get a knife, it sort of like melds to you, and it becomes part of like your kit, your daily piece, and the Oppenel knives, for whatever reason, have always done that for me. The foraging knife from Oppenel, I think is the best foraging knife, just because of this brush, is a really good version of this brush. The reason you have a brush on your foraging knife is that when you're foraging things, they are covered in dirt because you have pulled them out of the ground. And if you put whatever you're foraging, mushrooms, herbs, whatever it is, with dirt in a bag, that dirt will cover everything. So if you brush everything off before it goes into the bag, your final product is going to be much nicer. You don't have to wash it when you get home. And then the everyday tool, Gerber. I don't know half the things that are in here, but I'm excited to find out, you know? Someday I'll be like, on the side of the road and there'll be something in my car that won't work and I'm like, oh yeah, there's that 
file that I needed to file my battery so that it gets a better connection. I don't know, it's just, you know, pliers and a knife and your potential mishaps in your future all in one little kit here. GoPro, because I'm a narcissist and I need to constantly film myself doing things. I don't know what that's about, but I'm deeply into it. I've gotten over the hump of wearing this thing on my head. Our friend Schaefer calls it the Teletubbies of the snowboard hill, but GoPro seems to be, for me, the one that just works good. The pace of dirt is, it's almost laughable. We're in places for about a week and we're seeing three to five people a day. And sometimes those people are hours apart from each other. So we are a super small crew of four folks, two filmers and a producer, and we don't stop moving from the second we wake up to the second we go to bed. It gets really hectic, but in those moments, a lot of times when you're sort of raw, you potentially can tap into some great conversations. For us, it was one thing after the next, whether it was the tidal bore on the Turnigan arm, this thing coming out of nowhere, to razor clamming with grizzly bears. I mean, it was an endless barrage of incredible experiences, but I think my favorite moment in Alaska was probably just the very end, the feast, and sitting up and watching the sunset and kind of taking it all in from 3,000 foot peak. And an amazing place to kind of reflect on how incredible that journey was. Looking over the table here at all the stuff just makes me want to get on the next adventure. I mean, this is literally all, <laughs> all one would need. Maybe add a bike or a couple other pieces, but seeing all this stuff just makes me want to pack it up and hit the road. So thank you to Huckberry for giving me this opportunity to adventure and express myself through jumping off rocks and cliffs. Thanks to Gore Ware for keeping me dry, GNU for making amazing snowboards. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys keep following along as we go on to our next adventure. See you out there.